Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so I welcome you all to the Hello A11Y August meetup. Uh, this is me, Tanisha Sabarwal, and I will be the host for the day. So we're sort of experimenting with more regular meet meetups. So this is one where we try to bring in more of uh, uh, workshops, more meetups and all of that. So if you have any suggestion for us uh, in the coming month that uh, we should be uh, doing a meetup particular to something, you can just uh, let us know so that we can help give back to the community better. You can maybe DM us on our Twitter handles or DM any of the organizers, Manjula, Aditya, or even me. So uh, without uh, further ado, I think we should get started. So uh, our uh, so uh, the speaker of the day is Anuradha. She is a front end developer and she works as a front end consultant. And uh, uh, she is a uh, accessibility advocate. Uh, she recently became a JDE, which is the Google Developer Expert for Web Technologies. So congratulations on that. And we're very glad to have you here. Today, she'll be speaking about creating accessible React applications. And personally, I'm very excited for the talk because I use React a lot. A lot of front-end developers' favorite thing is React. And even if you don't know React, I think this talk will help you broaden your horizon on uh, front-end uh, accessibility in front-end and web technologies. So over to you, Anuradha. Uh, we are all excited to have you here. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Tanisha, and uh, all the organizers. I'm uh, really excited to be speaking at this event. So, uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome you all here. Uh, so let me share the screen once and let me know once you can see the screen. Yeah, we can see it. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, again, my name is Anwada Kumari and today I will be talking about creating accessible React applications. So before we start, uh, Tanisha already gave a nice introduction. So yeah, I think I will skip most of this. But uh, if you would like to uh, reach out to me to discuss any technical thing or anything related to accessibility, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn at uh, Anuradha15 or on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Twitter by ID Miracle underscore 404. So the topics which we are going to cover today are, uh, I will start with introduction of accessibility and what is its importance. And then uh, we will first see how to test for accessibility so that we know what are the issues and then we will see how to fix those uh, using the code. And I will also share some uh, useful tools and extensions resources which will help you to get started with it and uh, discover more on accessibility front. Let's get started. So accessibility, the first question always comes that what exactly is accessibility? Accessibility, it also has a neuronym called A11Y, where 11 refers to the number of letters between A and Y. So it is, accessibility means making the resources and services usable by everyone, regardless of their ability or disability. Why should we care about accessibility? Like, why are we talking about it? Because whenever we build, we build it for the users. So uh, whatever we are making, our products, the application, everything we are building for the users. And we do not know what our users could be going through. So uh, they could have certain disability or they might be using different type of technologies or different type of tools to use our application. So there are uh, things like assistive technologies like keyboards, screen readers, switches, and so on. So they could be using our applications in a different way and not uh, just like using mouse and so on. So is our uh, content which we are creating compatible to all those things? So is it accessible to all different types of technologies? With also, the third and the most important thing, which I believe is we need to care about accessibility because it is us who is making the web inaccessible. So um, may, often we do not follow the right coding practices we end up creating a very bad markup or we end up doing something which was not supposed to do in that way and that makes the things access inaccessible we will see some of the examples today so that you will know what i mean by that as per who world health organization 
around 15% of world population live with some form of disability. Now 15% translates to around 1 billion people in the world. It's a lot. There are huge number of users and we should be caring for each and every one for them. And we must be making things accessible for all of them. There are different types of disabilities when we talk about it. So there could be a visual, auditory, motor, or cognitive. So um, also they can be categorized into multiple uh, ways, like uh, they could be permanent, temporary, or they could be situational. So if we talk about visual, so if uh, someone is born blind, or that could be a permanent disability. However, someone who might have any infection in their eyes, or maybe uh, they've developed some cataract or something, that could be a temporary disability. And then uh, let's say uh, uh, someone is trying to uh, read something or access something in a very bright light. So that uh, bright light might be a situational disability, like in that bright light, you cannot see multiple things properly on your screen. So every one of us, it says that every one of us, uh, it's true that there are around 15% of people who are uh, have some form of disability, but 100% of us might have situational disability at one or the other point of time. So it's really important because we don't know uh, who will need those accessibility features uh, in uh, throughout their life. Uh, and since there are lots of different types of users, so there are different types of ways in which they can access the web. So uh, these are also called assistive technologies. So for example, there are screen readers, keyboards, switch, magnifiers, there are braille and a lot more different types of technologies which users end so that they can access the web properly. Now, when we talk about accessibility, uh, accessibility helps everyone. It also helps the people who are having any technical issues. So like uh, someone who is on a smaller, uh, who is on a slower connection or who are like using maybe some older operating system and so on. Then there could be people who are using our content on small devices, phones or tablets, right? So by making things accessible and actually by making things responsive, we also take care that these are properly accessed by users who are using it on different device sizes. Then situational disability, which we just covered in disability section. So there could be uh, different types of situation in which you might need to use accessibility features. Uh, for example, again, if you are trying to hear or like maybe hear some audio or some uh, video in a very noisy surrounding. So if it has some subtitles or some closed captions, then it would be really easy for you to understand the content. Also, there are something called a progressive disability. So um, a person might have everything fine today, but as the age proceeds, uh, there might be some hearing disability or some sight disability, motor disability, and so on. So people might need at the different age points or different accessibility features to be able to drive the web properly. So uh, for accessibility, there are official guidelines and principles, and those are called WCAG. So WCAG means Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Uh, they are all divided into four broad categories, which are like called four principles. They are acronymed as core. Uh, so, and, uh, so how do we see this? So whenever we create something, we must think that whatever I'm creating, does it really adhere to these four principles? So what is it here? P means perceivable. It means that whatever content we are creating, that must be, uh, that can be perceived by the user in any form of their senses. So if a person can see, they can see and perceive that content. If they cannot see, they can maybe hear or they can touch and then uh, understand what is the content. Operable, now that the user has perceived that what it is. So let's take a very uh, example of a form maybe. So let's say I have a button on a form. So I perceive that, okay, this is a button now as a user of whatever I must be using. So I might be using a mouse or a keyboard or a switch. I should be able to operate on it. So I should be able to operate that button. 
the third thing is understandable so user must be able to understand what they have to do like if there are any action or any uh, content the user must be able to understand what it is and what action they have to take so like if there is a button then they must understand that okay what this button does then robust so robust means there are multiple types of user agents browsers and new assistive technologies which might be coming in so whatever we are creating that must be compatible to all of these so that users might be using any one of those but they still are able to access the application properly there is this uh, website of so w3.org it is official website and it contains all the information so uh, there is this uh, link where it tells about wakag and what exactly is meant by this poor it's a very nice one which gives a very high level idea of how uh, you can uh, realize the poor so uh, you can go through it and understand this is very nice website okay so uh, we just saw a uh, little bit of introduction and importance of accessibility let's start by testing from accessibility perspective so whenever we are creating something uh, how do we know it's accessible or not for that we will have to test it right so let's first start with testing uh, the first and uh, most basic form of testing which i feel is just using your keyboard to test the website or your application so unplug your mouse and just uh, use your website with your keyboard so i have an example here so yeah in india we have this flipkart.com which is an e-commerce website i took this as example because there are lots of accessibility issues here so we will get to know what exactly uh, inaccessible things look like so for example uh, and throughout this session i am going to uh, focus more on a uh, keyboard plus screen reader the users who use keyboard and screen readers to navigate through the web uh, because there are different combinations and uh, we cannot get it for all in one session so uh, let's say i try to use my uh, keyboard for it okay so um, I, for keyboard users, they use tab and uh, shift tab to go through the interactive elements. So interactive elements like buttons, form elements, anchor tags, etc. cetera. Uh, so I will try to use tab to move forward to all the interactive element and you can use shift tab to go backward to all the interactive element. So like for example, I use mouse and you can see I can hover over this export plus. So it's a link and then I can come here, click and search for something. I can click or go through all these things or hover and go through these things so let's see how a keyboard user can access this so i'm trying to press tab so i press tab once uh nothing happened uh actually the focus is now on here so i mean the control is there but you cannot see any outline on it so we don't know where i am currently right so i press tab again so it's on explore plus link now, but you still can't see anything. There is no visual feedback. And hence, the user who is just using a keyboard, they could be confused because they really don't know what's happening. I mean, I'm pressing tab, but I'm not going anywhere. So what's happening? I press tab again. I come to the search box. Now here it's visible because uh, this is an input and uh, I can come here. You can see some drop downs. I press tab again. There is this outline on this uh, search icon this is how uh, there should be some indication so this is the indication which should be there on all the interactive elements so that the user are able to understand where they are currently because now i know exactly by seeing this uh, black focus uh, outline that hey i am on this search icon i press tab again so but still nothing is happening so i'm pressing tab multiple times so at a point i am lost right because I don't know where I am currently. So how do I proceed to buy anything from this website, right? So th this is what, whenever we are testing with a keyboard, we should see that uh, it are things uh, like people can understand where they are in the flow when they're on a website or can they like use the keyboard to trigger the action? So if there is a button, can they press enter and that button action goes uh, starts happening and so on so these are some of the things which we must test when we are uh, using the keyboard so yeah this is what we can test with the keyboard then there are multiple automated tools which we can use to uh, 
test the accessibility of our websites. So for example, there are things in our DevTools, there are extensions which we can use. Lighthouse is there by default in our DevTools. So let's see. So for this one, uh, what I have done is I have already ran the Lighthouse report, but let me show you how we can do that. So let's say if I open any website, so this is like one of the websites which I have created to uh, share information on accessibility. So if you uh, inspect any uh, website, go to the Lighthouse. There in the DevTools, you can find a tab called Lighthouse. Here there are multiple options in categories. We can select accessibility and the device as desktop and then click on generate report. When we do that, it reloads the page and gives a very nice overview of whether things are accessible or not. It also gives a score. Now, here I would like to say a very important thing, never uh, get happy even if it shows 100 because uh, it itself says that this, uh, this is not take care of 100% of accessibility issues, all the automated tools which we use, they will only take care of like 10 to 20, uh, sorry, uh, 30 to 40% of uh, accessibility issues. So this 100 only means that I do not have those 30 to 40% of accessibility issues in my website. They also give you a, a list of what we can check additionally, manually, so that we take care that it is accessible or not. So this is a very uh, nice tool. So let's go thus for Flipkart. So this is the result for Flipkart. Uh, if you can see, so it, it, it has score of 63 uh, and then it shows errors below like buttons don't have, an, don't have an accessible name. So it's talking about this search icon. So because it's just a button, there is no label to it. So uh, when the screen reader will go, they will just pronounce button for it. So if the user who is only relying on screen reader to understand, what is happening on the screen, they will only hear button, so they won't be able to understand what that button does. Uh, then images don't have alt, so there are multiple images on this website which do not have an alt tag. So when they don't have alt tag, the person who is not able to see again, who is totally reliant on screen, screen readers, they won't be able to understand that what that represents or if that information is useful to me or not. So. Uh, and there are other things like contrast. So this gives a very nice information. And also you can click on the elements to go to that here in uh, your elements pane and see what exactly is the issue and you can fix this. So there is one more, uh, which is called X. So Lighthouse comes by default for X DevTools, you have to install it. But uh, a point to note here is Lighthouse also under the hood works on X principles. Uh, so you can use either of these tools then there is also a extension which I really like using, which is Wave Browser uh, extension. So for this, what you can do, you can install it in your uh, browser and it gets installed as an extension. So for that, you right click anywhere on the website and say Wave this page. And it will give you error and all the overview of the things. I like this a lot because it also gives you a very nice structure of your website, like how your website is structured. And for the errors, it also gives you uh, error information. So if you like click on any error, I think it gives information. Maybe it's in summary somewhere. Yeah, so it, it gives you information of the error. So like, what is the information about that error? And it also links it to the specific WCAG uh, guidelines so that you can go and read it. So it's, it's also a very nice um, tool. The third one is screen readers. So screen readers are uh, like really sometimes hard to understand when we are starting off. Uh, there are screen readers for all different operating system and mobile. Uh, so we will always uh, get a screen reader coming with our operating system. Like for Windows also, there is a screen reader which is already there. And also there is NVDA, which is free, which we can install and uh, check for accessibility. So this is also very nice. But for screen readers, sometimes it takes time to understand what are the different flow and how user might be using. There are also certain uh, shortcuts which the user use. So they don't always rely on the tap, tap, tab and arrow. 
they also use certain shortcuts like they, if they want to just see the links or just the headings they have different shortcuts for those so you can whatever screen reader you are trying to uh, learn or use you can go ahead and check for their shortcuts and try to understand how the users use it so dq university is a very uh, nice website in this uh, case also where it provides a very nice information on these things okay so, uh, and if we test with screen readers too, uh, it really gives a nice insight of what exactly uh, our end user might be having the experience with our website and application. So uh, now that we have spent some time in understanding that how we can test for accessibility of our websites, uh, let's see how we can uh, fix some of the common ones. So I have picked some of the common accessibility errors, which uh, always are there. And let's see how we can fix that. So the first thing, which is like really important, and I believe that uh, many developers get it wrong, uh, but it's, it's really, really important, is using the semantic HTML tags. So uh, often what we end up doing developers that creating everything with diffs and spans, just everything, because, you know, with JavaScript, you can attach any event to like any tag. So buttons, uh, anchor tags, everything we have, maybe we have to create a styled, beautiful kind of button or something, and we end up using diffs for it and attach the on click. So don't do that. That is my advice. Use the semantic HTML tags, which were meant for that purpose, like button, button have a specific purpose, like the buttons mean that some action will happen if the user clicks on it or triggers the action on it, right? And then there are anchor tags. Anchor tags means whenever you have to go for navigation, like you need to navigate the user to some other place, whether within your website or outside your website. So for that, there is a specific tag, which is anchor tag. Then there are form elements. So there are lots of semantic HTML uh, tags, which we should be using so that uh, it, it creates a good markup which is understandable. And if, if we are creating a valid markup, like valid HTML structure, then it will be automatically be accessible and understood by the assistive technology. So let's see an example of it. So, okay. So there, uh, I, I have just created some uh, basic examples of how we can uh, check for accessibility. So, let me open it up. It? Yeah, this one. I think. Yeah. So, uh, what I like, uh, I can show you that you can use any kind of tag to create buttons and it will just look like button, right? So, I have created two buttons here. One is using normal button tag and one is using div. Now, someone who just uses mouse can click on these and the both will work the same way. So for now I have just put console log on these two. But let's say a user is using a keyboard and like keyboard and screen reader combination to go through all the buttons. So they will use tab, so I press tab here. So there is this black outline on it too, which says that, okay, this button is in focus and screen reader will pronounce the name that this is the button. And then they can use enter or uh, to trigger the action. So I pressed enter and the action was triggered. Now, if that person wants to go to maybe some other button too, so if they press tab again, uh, you see this button totally got skipped. So if I cannot see, I will never even know that there was another button there because that's not in the flow and that's not interactive. So definitely not meant to be acted upon. So now if I'm using any uh, non-semantic HTML tag, then I have just made it inaccessible to the user. So how to make it accessible is first thing definitely, uh, which is most important is using HTML tags. So use button. Whenever you have to create a button, use button. But then um, I also saw a, another way of uh, making it because there are many places in which we have already like in existing applications that we have like created complex markup and we have created diff and all. So how can you still make it accessible? So if you want to make the existing things accessible, first of all, you go ahead and 
change it to button if you can, but if you can't, so first there are multiple things which you need to do in order to make things accessible. The first thing is that it should be in the flow, like the user should first be able to reach to that button in order to act on it, right? So for that, in uh, you have tab index. So tab index is in HTML also, but in HTML you will find it with small i. In uh, React, uh, the i is capital in tab index, and then you can set it to zero. So when I set it to zero, I want to say that, hey, I want to make this tabable and in the flow of the element. So now if I press tab, uh, still I came to this div, okay? So this div is accessible now, but still can I really act on it? So I'm trying to press enter, but nothing is happening here. Why? Because I have written on click on it. So on click, when you are creating again the semantic HTML tags there, the keyboard accessibility comes out of the box because they know that, okay, it's a button. So on click means the user should be able to uh, use keyboard as well and able to trigger the action. But when you are using a non-semantic HTML, then on click specifically means on click. So it can be triggered only using mouse. So what do we do? when uh, I want to make it keyboard accessible. So for that, I will have to use a key down, uh, key down event maybe, okay? So, okay. So in key down event, let me copy paste, otherwise, so, time. so yeah. What we can do in the key down event is uh, whatever event is there. Now key down event will fire on every click, the, every key press, but I don't want to have that. I just want to trigger action when either enter key is pressed or either space bar is pressed. Now space is also for buttons. If you read the accessibility guidelines, buttons can be triggered via either space bar press or enter press. So I will check for uh, keys that which keys getting pressed. So if space or enter is pressed, I will go ahead and do the same action which I am doing on the on click. And also one more thing to remember here because this is if a space bar is pressed, the by default action of a space is to scroll the uh, page. So it is also one of the accessibility features that whenever you press the space bar, the page scrolls. But uh, in this case, whenever the user uses space press on any button, I don't want to have page to scroll. So I will have to prevent default event. So now if I save this and go here. So I'm using enter or space bar both. So you see the event is triggered. So uh, this is one of the ways in which if you are facing some uh, issue, so you can make how you can make things keyboard accessible. And this is just about button, but normally there are multiple more things when we end up creating complex elements and we want them to be accessible. So we can use these tricks to make those accessible. So, Okay, where is this? Oh, okay. So, yeah, using buttons and anchor tags. Now, I want to talk about anchor tags again because this is very important. I have seen it at multiple places. So in multiple markup, I have seen that what people do that uh, they use buttons and they, uh, you know, style it like a link. So let's say I want to have multiple links. I use button and I styled it as a link. For example, this one is a button which is getting displayed as a link while the second one is a real anchor tag. So the main issue with this is now they both are clickable. They both will take you to the in their destination. So you might say that what could be the issue. The main issue which I find here is that uh, remember I told you that when users use screen readers, they don't just tab on it and go to all the links and button. They have these shortcuts. So let me once trigger NVDA and I will show you. So I'm using NVDA screen reader to uh, show things. Okay, so I'm on my website and what I will do that I'm trying to extract all the links. So I just want to go through all the links maybe. So for that, there is a shortcut. Uh, for NVDA on Windows, which is insert plus F7, okay? So I have not figured out how to, you know, 
zoom it in this pop up so somehow i can't zoom here so but if you can uh, still uh, see there are different types of options links headings form fields buttons and landmarks so if i am trying to let's say i have a website and all the links i have created maybe using button tag so they look like a link but internally they are not a link so if someone comes to my website and they want to see what are the different links on the website or and they want to quickly go through all the links so they won't find that link in this tab so yeah so if you can see here uh, we i have this go to stack overflow this is using anchor tag but i don't have the first anchor here so that is listed as part of buttons group yeah so so that's why whenever we always use the right semantic html tags when we have to uh, use it so that uh, we don't end up confusing our users okay so next is forms so uh, forms are everywhere like almost everywhere whenever uh, we have to log in sign up we have to get the users to fill some details for payments everywhere like we want users to fill some forms right so they should be accessible because then only users will be able to fill it properly or then or specifically if it's a payment form because if users won't be able to pay then it would be a uh, really bad for your business so let's see uh, some of the examples of form accessibility so this is one of the um, basic things like we should be labeling our form inputs but still you will see this error on like a uh, lots of pages on lots of pages you will find that the forms are not labeled correctly the inputs are not labeled correctly so for example here i have a form where let's say on my website somewhere i have a sign in to twitter thing so email and password but there is no label because the design they are like okay we don't need labels uh, we will just have some inputs and a button now if i am a sighted user i can see this and maybe understand okay but uh, for screen reader users they are totally reliant on the labels to understand what they have to fill in the, into these inputs right so let me start the nvidia again So here uh, it's reading the uh, placeholder, but uh, most of the times they don't read even placeholder. And the second issue is when you start editing it. Uh, let me. So and uh, let's say it's a big form, okay? Uh, so if it would be a big form, and uh, let's say I filled something, uh, right? Uh, so after you fill things and it's a big form, let's say 10, you, you might be confused as well if even if you are a sighted user that, okay, what was there to fill in it one and if I filled it right or not. So label should always be there. But when the users use labels and uh, I recently saw a very bad marker about that. So I'm going to talk about that too. So I want to label it. So how do I label? I write label and email. So I have seen this at multiple places. We just go ahead and uh, write labels in our password in top of the input. So if you see this again, uh, you can see these labels here, but they are not always connected. So if you go ahead and check the accessibility tree, so uh, you can check the accessibility tree of everything that you are creating. Just inspect your uh, website and in elements pane, um, elements tab here you can see different types of options right styles computed uh, in the if you have to click on this and go to accessibility and here i can uh, find this accessibility uh, accessibility pane and this tree is called accessibility tree and uh, you get to know uh, from this accessibility tree that what information is it passing on to assistive technology so for this this is really smart because it is taking up the placeholder but if there were no placeholder then there would be no information on how the labels are coming in so let's say 
uh, in placeholder instead of this, I might have something else or if I don't have anything, uh, because sometimes we fill it with the example of what it is. So now there is nothing there. So there is no label here because that information I haven't provided. I have provided label, but I haven't said that this label is for which element. So for that, we can uh, assign it, add, okay, I already have an ID. So what we can do is uh, again in HTML, we use for, for equal to, and then we say the ID of the element. So I want to say that, hey, I want to have this label for this element. So this is what is meant by for, but uh, in React, you can have it with HTML4 because uh, in React, is, uh, JS6 is written in JavaScript. So for is a reserved keyword. So we use HTML4 here. So uh, if I do this, and come here, uh, now you can see that it is labeled by the label and you get the label here properly, email. So uh, always use the label and, uh, and use label only mostly because I have seen someone using paragraph recently and it was like, uh, we really are using anything to just show text. So using always use labels and label them properly. Now this, Again, there is one more thing here. What if the design is adamant that, uh, no, I don't want to have any labels. Like from UI perspective, I just want to have these uh, two um, input boxes only. In that case also, I, I always say that as a developer, it's our responsibility to make things accessible. So what we can do is have this label and go ahead and hide this using the uh, any uh, class. So there is this reusable class, which is, uh, which you can use. So there's this styling, what it does that it hides that text or anything where you put this class on from UI. So this won't be seen, this won't be visible, but still this is in the DOM. So it will be pronounced by the assistive technology or it will be like uh, exposed to the assistive technology. You can give this any name. So a no, lot of convention they use SR only means the screen reader only. So uh, you can use this. And then if I put a class of this here, so let's say uh, in any case, I have to like maybe uh, not show it on the UI. Still, I, I, I still want to make it accessible and want to show it to the assistive technology. So this happened. So now if I inspect it, you can see that it still is taking this label, but that is not visible on UI. So we still made it accessible. Uh, the second thing here is again for a uh, icon only button. So let's say if there is a button uh, which is just has an icon. So if we check the accessibility of this button, now, this is just a generic. There is no label, nothing, no title on it. So when the screen readers will pronounce, they will just say button. So I don't know what um, that does, right? So for that, we must always provide a label to it, even if we have to hide it from the UI. So how you can do that? So this is the button. So if you see the markup, I have a button with, uh, uh, which, which has an icon inside it and a class name, which shows the Twitter icon on that. But if I want to label it, I can say Aria. Okay. Aria label. And you can say sign in to Twitter. Like give give it a label, give it a nice label so that this is what is pronounced to this. And now this icon, I don't need to expose this. So if there is something which uh, I don't want exposed, you can add a Aria hidden tag to it. Uh, aria hidden property uh, okay so if you say that it's aria hidden it won't be exposed and because we already have a button which says that hey sign in to the twitter now uh, yeah if we come here you can see now this button has a label and it's reading it from here so uh, if i what's the name if i start again uh, nvda So if you can see, it just read out sign into Twitter button. What if I... Okay, so now let's... It just told button if there was no ARIA label and when I added ARIA label, it read that. So, uh, yeah. 
so uh, th this is a nice way but uh, again uh, area level is one thing but if you are using localization on your website so i read recently that area label uh, they don't get internationalized so they don't get uh, converted into a different language uh, so uh, in that case we can use aria labeled by so uh, why aria label uh, doesn't get because we are passing the uh, text here so what we can do is there are two different ways in which we can do and it will still respect the localization settings so let's say we can create a span and give it an id maybe something called button label and then i use the text here okay and what I can say, instead of saying aria level, when we say aria level, we give the label there as a value, but there is something called aria labeled by, okay? So what it does, aria labeled by, it takes the ID of the element. So by doing so, I am telling that, hey, this button is going to be labeled by this element, okay? So uh, when we do this again, and we write this span here, this is going to show, so I can use the, previous class SR only so that it's not visible on UI. So if you can see this here and I inspect and show you, it again says uh, sign into Twitter, but now it's taking it from uh, that span because I have attached the aria labeled by. Now these are uh, these can be localized, so there is no issue with their localization. So that issue is also solved. Then uh, now that I see this, uh, there is also a third way I don't want to use any aria maybe because I am already using a span and I can hide it from the UI. Why not use this span inside the button? Because uh, any text content which you have inside the button that will get read out, right? So this is a span. I want it inside the button maybe. So let me remove aria label by. And what I have here, I have a button and in button in, inside with an icon, I have one extra span and I say that, hey, this span should not be visible on a uh, UI, but still it has this text. So now if I save this, again, you can see that inspect this button. So now this button still has it by default, it's content. So because there's a text content inside it, that will be read out. So it's still accessible. So there are different ways in which you can do it. So depending upon um, your uh, requirement. So because this is the one which I prefer now that I have read it because yeah, this does not require any aria and aria should be like really used when uh, like a desperate measures, like you are not able to make it accessible by any other measures, then try to use aria. But otherwise we can use the markups to make things accessible. So let's get back to the PPT. So we saw how to label the form inputs and also, yeah, don't hide outline. So uh, if you see here, whenever I'm tabbing, there is no outline. So you cannot see, now I have tabbed and my focus is on this Twitter icon, but you cannot see that, right? Uh, because the culprit is, which is again in like, I don't know how, what percent I could say, but at least 90% of website, what they do is they have this outline none, like set on root. They don't want to show anything like no outline. So this is a really bad practice because unless you have a different outline styling, so you can do this definitely, but if you have some other styling on it. So for example, uh, in this website itself, I have, uh, I think I don't have an outline because I want to have a different kind of styling. So if you see, I have a different nice kind of styling on some of these so that's why on these I might have hidden outline but what I want to say that always have some sort of visible indication just not hide outline and don't do anything which I was doing here so I have hidden outline on all of these so the visual indication will not be here so this is the culprit just just don't do this this is a uh, very bad uh, so let me remove this because yeah just let's remove it or add your own styling but don't leave it like that so now if you can see these are uh, uh, outlines which are coming this can again be styled to make it nice uh, circle or anything which you want but it can definitely be styled so now it's giving very nice uh, visual feedback and uh, yeah 
using aria we saw how to use aria uh, for label we saw aria level but uh, it uh, messes with the localization so we can use aria labeled by or we can use a span then one more thing which is uh, i want to talk about today is aria required what aria required does so for example for this website i have these two both as required so there are two ways in which we can mark things required so what we do we can say that hey this is required field okay so my email and password they both are required so what it does that when i click on it 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 gives a like it's a default of browser so it gives a default error but what happens that uh, we might have some errors of our own to show so we want to show some errors and we don't want to maybe show this uh, default error so what we do uh, we don't use this and uh, we we remove this and instead let's say i'm trying to show an error so i have written some simple logic that if there is no data just show an error and i want to show an error message to the user instead of that pop which was coming up so now uh, if i'm trying to enter so it gives a uh, color and uh, these errors right so this is there but how does the user know that this field was required so when we saw the screen reader pronouncing this they never told that it was a required field so how would user know in first place that it is required so if we had used that required field then it shows that it's required but now i have removed that because i want to have my own error messages so now there is no way that a screen reader or assistive technology they know it's required so if you can see here it says required false but i have required true so in that case what we can do that use aria required and set it to true so uh, when we do this now you can see that it says that uh, in accessibility pane uh, where we are seeing all this accessibility information you can check here this is a very nice handy tool you can check that it says that it is required true right um, okay so so uh, use this if you are not using the required so always use aria required on your required elements then don't rely only on colors uh why i say this is because let's say uh here i am already many times we will see just a visual feedback of error so for example here i click on this and we show this red color right red means okay there is some error in it now why this is uh, uh we should not be relying only on color is because what if a user has some sort of color blindness so you can emulate the color blindness again in your dev tools by uh, going to the rendering pane so if in uh, in your dev tools in elements pane there is something called rendering and in the rendering if you scroll down you can emulate different type of vision deficiency now uh, let's say a person who has achromatopsia they are visiting this website and they are trying to uh, do something and i am relying only on color to show the error so this is how it looks to the person with achromatopsia so they can only see in the gray scale black white gray so they won't be able to understand what color it is and so all the information which we are displaying just in color form will like not be accessible to those so in that case if we have a, a very nice errors that is good because even if they can't figure it out by er colors they can figure it out by the error below right so let me go ahead remove this this is one thing now the second thing is while we have the errors here uh, we can see it right that there were some errors and we can go ahead and fix it but let's say again a user who is using screen readers for them they won't know about this information because we are not telling them that hey there is some extra text below or there is some error right so for that we need to announce these error messages to our screen reader users so for example uh, let me go ahead and tell uh, yeah, here so we have these uh, properties where we can say that uh, i will say that hey you need to show this so there is uh, aria live polite which means that whenever a new message comes in or some text gets appended to that that or uh, div or something you need to announce that to the user and the role of status again it's the html attribute only 
normally only one of those would work but i have read that sometimes uh, one or the other doesn't work so we can use the combination of these so um, they do nothing from a ui perspective so you won't see any change on the ui but it does a lot for the uh, screen reader users so for example okay i think i will just demo it once uh, so so i will try to press uh, this and we will see okay what happened i did something wrong <laughs> This is not the issue. Role area live equal to polite. Okay. Okay. I think I messed up with something. This should have worked, or I'm doing something wrong. So never mind i <laughs> this example definitely went astray but still uh, this is the a way to do it uh, i will figure it out what went wrong maybe i'm doing something wrong here and i will tweet it out if i uh, get what was the issue but still uh, whenever we have something dynamic ha happening and we want to show that important information to the user uh, we should be using uh, these roles and aria live so that they get announced to the user okay so let's see so uh, we saw how to uh, we should not rely only on colors and we should show the messages as well and also how to announce important details then uh, these are things which i want to highlight because whenever we are writing jsx there are subtle differences uh, with html uh, some of the most important ones are tab index uh, like it's all small in html but we have i capital in um, jsx syntax then on click whenever we are adding on click handler again it's in all small when we are using html but when we are using jsx uh, that c is again a capital then for uh, for becomes html for when we are using the react code so and then uh, the last thing which i want to discuss are uh, useful tools and extensions so we have this plugin eslint plugin uh, for jsx alley uh, you install it and it will give very uh, nice uh, information about uh, linting information if you have uh, accessibility issues like let's say you have an image and you have not provided an alt then it will give you a warning that uh, you don't have alt or if you try to use div and on click so it gives a nice one you can use it with your linting uh, then uh, we have react acts wave we already saw then there is chrome box this is kind of a screen reader but for chrome browser uh, so you can also install it chrome box and uh, use it as a screen reader for uh, your browser these are some of the resources which uh, have nice information about accessibility so this is uh, official react documentation they have very nice documentation about accessibility then uh, we have authoring practices by y arya they are uh, really nice dq has very nice uh, resources on accessibility and then uh, this is the website which i created Ex explore accessibility uh, i try to curate the links and some of the examples uh, which will be helpful when understanding accessibility so take a look at these whenever you have time uh, i will be sharing this uh, ppt so that you can get access to all the links to summarize the access to information is the right of every person so whenever we are creating something whenever we are building anything we must always think from accessibility perspective we must think from like how users will they be able to use it properly or not so you can use aria to enhance accessibility but aria should always be handled with care because uh, if we write wrong aria then it it might make things inaccessible as well so uh, as i uh, told earlier also like aria should always be the last resort in most of the cases we would be able to make things accessible without using any aria but if we need to use it like read it and don't use uh, like uh, try to use proper aria 
and whatever we are creating always test it so not only test with mouse test with all different things also test with your keyboard and test with different tools and extensions to understand what is uh, the accessibility state of your website so because when we think about accessibility from the very start it's very easy to make things accessible uh, but if we make the whole product and then try to make things accessible then it takes a lots of work so always start uh, from accessibility perspective from the very beginning i also have action items for you today so if you learn something so pass on the learning and uh, let's spread the awareness around accessibility uh, let other people also know talk to it uh, talk about it to your teammates your friends and let's all work together to create an inclusive web so uh, you can also find the resources if you scan this QR code here or you visit the website, uh, the link at t.ly forward slash uh, ca in capital IFSO. Okay. It also has a feedback link. So do provide feedback for uh, this talk so that if you have uh, any points for me, I will try to take it up. Thanks a lot. It was very nice presenting and I can take the questions. Uh, thank you, Anuradha. That was such a uh, great talk. Uh, if you have any questions, you can drop it in the chat. Meanwhile, there are a few questions, so I'll go ahead and ask them. So there's this question by Sachindra. He says, uh, UI wise, won't the outline with the border or any box shadow look weird when you're trying to uh, concentrate on focus? I think it's the most asked question when we say we should not avoid uh, the focus outline so uh, yeah so for that uh, like i told that you can definitely style it so for example for my this website uh, what i have done is if you see uh, i have styled it they are not using that black outline so it's upon you and if you go to different websites you will find that they have very different cool and very nice ways of you know uh, showing these uh, i think uh, there, there is this website i for but uh, the point I'm trying to say is if you think that that this black uh, outline or blue outline, whatever is depending upon a browser, if it looks not so good to you, so definitely you can go ahead and use a different styling, but don't hide it because you know how it's like, uh, I try to always say that uh, if you are using a mouse and someone takes away the cursor, what if this cursor is invisible? So how will you be able to navigate this website if you cannot see your cursor? So this is the same uh, outline works as the same thing for the keyboard users. So if you take away the outline, they won't be able to navigate. And if they are not able to use your website, then you are losing on customers. And also, there are legal legal uh, problems if the website is inaccessible. So uh, I think uh, it's best to always keep these things in mind uh, and uh, make it accessible. And yeah, make go ahead and uh, be creative and try to make different kinds of uh, outlines. There are also dashed outlines and so on. So yeah, take your pick, but just don't hide it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. the, there's one more question uh, from mm -hmm. the same person. I think he asked in context with uh, when you were explaining uh, a button uh, as a div. So he's asking if um, there are any uh, trial and error kind of check for these elements when you're not using semantic, uh, uh, HTML semantic elements. So how can we test that? Uh, can you just repeat because I lost you for a moment. Okay, uh, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so Sachindra is asking another question. This was in context when you were explaining that you're using a div as a button. Mm -hmm. So he is asking, is there any trial and error kind of check for such elements when in the case when you're not using semantic HTML? Uh, so the, uh, again, the check would be uh, using keyboards mainly. So for example, uh, how I found out that this is not accessible, I used the keyboard and I was not able to access it. So uh, any element uh, which is supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, supposed to be interactive and if you are trying to test it with different assistive technology like a keyboard or screen readers and you see that uh, hey this doesn't seem accessible or hey I cannot operate on it or I cannot go through it cannot reach to it so that should be your cue that 
I'm doing something wrong there and I need to fix this. And also I would like to tell you a very nice resource. Where is, uh, just give me. Uh, yeah, this one. I, I always say people to uh, visit this one. Whenever you are creating anything and you feel that I need to test that whatever I'm creating, is it accessible or not? Come to these Y Aria authoring practices. This is the official one. And I agree, this is somewhat overwhelming because it, there is lots of information and sometimes you might feel lost, but still. For example, uh, let's go to maybe model. So I'm trying to create a model. So when you have created it, come here, go to that and read it. That what are those interactions, like read this. So this says that when model opens, the focus moves to an element inside the dialogue. So you try to open your model via keyboard and see that if the focus moves inside your uh, uh, you know, dialogue. So read all these and check. So use these as your checklist and then you will get to know that if you are creating it in a right way or not. So this is the best website to like, you know, check for every element. So it, it con consists of uh, all the nice uh, controls which we can have and either these or you will have a combination of these so this almost covers for most i think all, almost all of those yeah uh, moving on uh, uh, sagar asks what does role equal to button on a div do and in continuation even harsh mm -hmm. is asking how important are these role and title attributes Yes. So, uh, yeah, so uh, when you are using a button, then you don't need to use a role on the button. But if you are using a div tag, uh, so if you say role equal to button, what it does that the role is actually, uh, that is an information which you are passing on to the assistive technology, again, like a screen reader in this case. So, uh, for example, in here, where we had this div. Now, if you see, I don't have a role on it. So let's go ahead and see what is being shown on this uh, accessibility tree. Okay. It's a generic, right? So uh, when the screen readers announce it, they won't say that it is a button. They will just say using div. But if I use a role here now, which I should have, I think I missed it. So it's a nice question. Thank you for asking. Uh, so we must always attach the role so that this gets exposed. So now if you see it was a generic before, now it says that it's a button. So in accessibility tree, you can see that, okay, the role is button. So this is a button. So when the screen reader will come to it, they will announce using div button. So, I mean, they will announce the user that, hey, the element which you have come across is button so that is the importance of role they will let the users know that what exactly that thing do now if you're using semantic html you i think uh, uh, roles are not much relevant unless we are using one thing for the other like uh, we might be using let's say checkbox we might be using the checkbox for some we create switches using checkbox right so we can create switches using checkbox so in that case we can set maybe role to switch or something so that it says that okay what you have encountered but the main uh purpose of role is to expose what is the that element and that to the user and how important are the role and title attributes so yeah role is really important because it it lets the uh, user know that what exactly is that element so because in a user's head let's say i, I cannot see so for me uh, if someone says that it's a button that's my cue that i can click on it like i can trigger any action on it but if there is no role announced to me i might think that okay this is just a text or something, right? So that is a cue. Like I know certain things, I know certain element, they perform different role. And title is again, a uh, title is important in the sense what whenever you attach a title, you hover over it and you can see it. So it is important again, because uh, sometimes when things are not, uh, uh, you know, that evident. So like, for example, here, so we all know that it's a Twitter icon, but let's say someone who doesn't know about Twitter for this visually, this is not giving any information, but if I attach a title to it, then if I hover over it, like, and I will see that title name on it. So uh, I will say, it will be say, like, let's say log into Twitter or something. So I can hover and understand what this will do. So that's why title is again important. 
Uh, I see one more question. I, I hope this answers the question, right? Uh, so let me know if someone asks again on any answer. Yeah, uh, it was quite clear. Okay. And there is this question, what is your opinion on when to use a button versus an anchor tag? So uh, how I uh, draw the line is button should do any action. Anchor should take me somewhere. So like uh, uh, if like the navigation or anything which takes me somewhere, even if inside the website or maybe some to new tab or something. So, but anchor should be used only when it's taking you somewhere. It's not performing something, but button, like what button can do, they can submit some data for you. They can show some more information to you. So they can do some action for you. And uh, so that is the distinction which I, take between button and an anchor tag. Yeah, I think uh, we are about time, but if it's okay by you, can we take a few yeah. more? Yeah, 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 please. Yeah, so uh, I think on the YouTube, there's this question coming that, is there any way to test mobile site without having a physical device or any tools which can help with uh, the accessibility testing of my application? Uh, for mobile, because I <laughs> have never worked on mobile much. Uh, so, uh, but I do know that like screen readers, there are uh, voiceovers for mobile. So in your Android or iPhone also, you will find uh, voiceovers uh, and they can be used to understand how users go through it. But then again, uh, how to test it using browser, like not using a physical mobile. That is something... I will maybe search and let you know, but at this point, I don't have any answer top of the head for that. There was this one last question by Satish and I would also like to know the answer. But as a React developer, what unique hurdle a developer faces when making the accessible site? And since React is a lot about making reusable components, so is there something that we should keep in mind in the initial stages when we're trying to build our code so that it uh, the components are as accessible as they can be. Yes, so yeah, uh, uh, so in React, uh, that definitely is a hurdle because there is a mind, even a mindset shift, you know, when you are writing HTML, you go on writing things uh, like button, drop down, everything. But when you are using a React, what we do, we create a reusable uh, component called button. And so now you have already created a reusable component called button or header. Then what we often do is we use that element. And in my mind, it's like, okay, I'm already using a button. So it feels semantic, but it's not. It's just a React component. So you need to write button inside that button component in order to make it accessible, right? So, uh, yeah, uh, and reusability is again a very important, uh, I think it's a strong point of React because then you can create an accessible element and then you can component and you can use it across your website. So uh, the main hurdle I would say that don't think about the component name and uh, think that it is accessible or so. Always check the markup, whatever you are writing in JSX. So that is going to translate to this HTML. So that is going to translate to these DOM elements, right? So always come and check what it led to, like how it was, uh, you know, uh, shown or uh, uh, how it converted into a DOM. So always check this resultant markup and then uh, you should be fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really important to take it from the very start. Like for example, if you are trying to create a button, why not create it button from the very start uh, and uh, like why to make it as a div and then when someone raises uh, accessibility uh, bug in your uh, QA environment or production and then you go ahead and fix it. So that is a lot of effort, duplication and cost, right? So why not make it accessible from the very start? So our effort is also reduced. We make things right from the very start. Yeah, I mean, that's such a good advice. Uh, I think that's about it. That's all the questions that we addressed. And anyways, I think Anuradha's, uh, uh, you, uh, you can let us know where people can contact you just in case if they have more doubts after they get access to the resources and everything. So, yes, yes. yeah. Uh, I
I will ping you. Yeah. And uh, in that, uh, I think uh, someone, yeah, Harsh mentioned in this chat, right? So the link which I told uh, in which it was uh, smaller L and not uh, I. So sorry for that. But yeah, that link definitely you can uh, ping uh, Tanisha in the uh, YouTube. Uh, sure. this, uh, so, so they will they will get all the um, you know slide link as well and there is a feedback form link as well as linkedin and twitter link also inside it so feel free to uh, reach out to me and uh, yeah i would love to discuss more about accessibility thank you so much uh, i think uh, we have uh, anuradha's twitter handle attached in our uh, uh, post so you can definitely contact her if you have any other doubts and thank you so much for such a wonderful session it was really a pleasure to host you thank you thank you it was uh, yeah very nice uh, presenting here uh, and i hope people found it uh, helpful <laughs> and thank you for everybody joining in from uh, the live stream and the zoom for having here hopefully you had a great time thank you Thanks. Yeah, Bye, everyone. Okay. Take care.